and psychogeography. Let's see what we're going to talk about today. While I'm pulling my notes together here, go go check out the website, zenglob.net. There's an archive of podcast episodes, links to other blog posts. There's a newsletter link to subscribe to. A bunch of other stuff. Do that. And then um, subscribe to the YouTube channel channel as well. Those of you who are watching the YouTube stream, um, do the reverse and subscribe to the podcast stream. So I'm not sure what I'm going to talk about today, or rather I'm not sure what I'm going to say about what I think I'm going to talk about. I have this notebook, and I uh, take notes, and it is a book of notes. Intention being to work through those notes as podcast subjects, right? So throughout the week, a thought may occur to me, and I will, um, if I remember, I will write it down in this book. And then I will set myself the challenge of working through those comments and speaking to them. Um, for the most part, these are fragments, not even usually complete sentences. Sometimes I write a few bullet points, but mostly they are um, single line fragments. And I like them because in this podcast, I, I don't typically have an agenda in terms of what I'm going to speak about for the 10 or 15 minutes that I record. I like the idea of having a um, an encapsulated an encapsulated idea that I sort of throw into the mix and see what see what comes out. One of the reasons I like doing these podcasts is because I feel like I will say things and um, come to conclusions through the process of podcasting that I wouldn't have come up with otherwise because there's something about sort of the focus and being a little bit on the spot. You know, I hit record and then I speak. Um, that's, uh, that's probably pretty apparent to those of you who have listened to more than a minute or two of these podcasts. They can be a bit rambly, but they do sort of focus around a topic. And sometimes that's a topic that I arrive at just before I hit record, and sometimes it's a topic that sort of built up this backlog of, of ideas. So the note today says, I'll just read the note and then we'll dig into it a little bit. Life is a story. Approach it with openness and curiosity. And then, sort of unusually, I wrote more underneath that. You know, I mentioned these are often just fragments, but here I wrote a, a, an initial comment already. I think I wrote this a couple of weeks ago on a, on a Saturday afternoon. I said, I don't know how or when or where. I have a pretty good idea why. Maybe I'm closer to the proximal cause of my death. Writing the trilogy is pure joy. So I'm referring there to um, a science fiction book that I started to write at the end of the last year. It's um, end of February now. So sometime in November, December of, of last year, I started writing a story, and really. Um, thinking that I wanted to try my hand at a longer fiction, work of fiction. Uh, really inspired by, the, by 
like uh, Kurvanga novels, you know, thinking of a set of books kind of like that, right? With some interesting ideas drawn from a, a thought experiment about a, what the universe might be like if a particular case were true. And I'm being cagey about this. I'm not going to talk too much about the process yet. Um, except that I started writing um, with pencil and paper for half an hour each morning, and it, it really did just um, just flow. It, it, it's a, it is a pure joy. The, the note that I wrote is, is true. Um, the story itself is still unformed. The characters are barely, barely sketched out. Um, there's a lot of work to do to get it to what I have in mind, a year's worth of work. But the steps along the way is just pure, pure pleasure to, to look at a story and see, well, what happens next? And then to write it down. Now, I know that that process will end at some point because the story will be finished, the book will be finished, or, or I'll give up. Um, but let's assume I keep writing until the book is finished. Then there's a story that has a beginning and a, and a middle and an end, even if it doesn't follow a particularly clear narrative structure. There's a first page and a last page. There's, there's some bindings on it. What if, I think I'm asking myself in that question, what if instead of looking at situations in my life that irritate me or that put me off course, what if, what if I were to approach my response to those situations with the same attitude that I approach sort of difficult writing problems? Like instead of tearing out the page, crumbling it up, cursing and throwing it away. My approach to this story has been to write more. If there's a if there's a, a bit that I wrote yesterday that I look at now and I think, what the fuck did that mean? Ridiculous. It's the stupidest thing I've ever read. Well, um, instead I look at it and think, well, what did I really mean there? What's in that? What can I pull on? What's the, and if I don't know, right? If I don't know what it is, at least where's where's a thread I can pull that will move something around? Because moving something around is better than not moving something around. And seeing where it moves to is a joy. Even if I don't like where it ends up because I can then come back again and pull on another thread. It's easier to talk about this when I'm talking about pencil and paper. But it, isn't, that, isn't that what I mean when I talk about meditation and when I talk about even Camus? Aren't we, aren't we trying to approach suffering in that same, in that same way? Like that's a difficult thing to think about because suffering is suffering, right? And, th and there's no joy in contemplating suffering. There's no pleasure in poking around at pain. Whether it's immediate physical pain, it's emotional pain, it's the pain of fear, the pain of things that have not yet happened. That kind of pain perhaps would benefit from being approached slightly differently. The struggles that are in life, my life, your life, cannot be written away. There's a, there's a point where I think my reaction to the difficulties in life can meaningfully change the scenario, but there are also just constraints 
Sartre talked about that, Heidegger talks about it, but Sartre in particular talks about you are radically free, but, but you're not unconstrained. I'm not unconstrained. I was born into a particular body. The body is now 52 years old with particular conditions and criteria. My life has unfolded in, in some regards in reaction to the choices I made unintentionally and intentionally within that radical freedom, but also within the constraints of being born in the time and place that I that I was. There's no reason to think that magical thinking can change the, the fundamental basis of who we are, where we are. I can teleport into a different dimension. But when I look ahead with fear, what if I rewrote that particular story. And again, there are some aspects of the story that cannot be rewritten. But the reaction to those can be. We're looking ahead and we know the story will end, right? Not, not immediately, not today, we figure, not tomorrow, far enough off in the future that it's a, an abstract. But, but, but no, it's not, right? There is a last page. I think what, I, what I'm trying to get to is, uh, you know, when we when we think about the future, and then when we think about particularly the, our own mortality, my own mortality, I do get to choose how I write that, how I write that story. Yeah, I get to choose how I react to that. And and why not have it be? the reaction that I have when I sit and I write my silly science fiction story, which is going to be an enormous meaty trilogy. Eventually, I've never written anything remotely like that before, either in scale, content, subject matter, intention. Um, I've written essays. And now I'm trying to write a best-selling science fiction trilogy. It's my retirement plan. I mean, and maybe I'll talk about the I'll talk about the book next month. I was alternating. This month I've been focused on trying to write a bit more of the uh, the space dog opera. And next month I'll put that aside for a few weeks and work on the on the trilogy and then I'll alternate. I think that's my plan for now is while I'm still pushing the early stages of both of those pieces. I don't want to focus on one and not the other. The deal that I have between the two projects is you get a month and then you get another month and you get a month off and then a month on. So, all right, very good. I think that's probably enough. A bit, a, a bit unfocused today, but there's a question there, right? So let me know what you think. Drop me a note, zenglop at gmail.com. Um, that, that question of, of the, the, touch with which we approach the writing of the future, particularly when we're talking about the fear of mortality. Mm. Um, does that make any sense? Let me know. <laughs>